Okay, Faisal, delighted to meet you again and fire away. Thank you, thank you uh, for accepting the interview and uh, we'll about three or uh, four topics. The first one mm. is concerning the launch of the phone, uh, the uh, amendment of the um, license, uh, mm -hmm. uh, some uh, concerns about uh, the products and service of the company, then we will move uh, and also the interconnection mm. uh, um, uh, the interconnection uh, agreement between the two operators. Mm -hmm. Then we'll move to QTIL concerning just uh, little uh, okay. questions. Uh, and we'll ask the question concerning uh, ICT. <laughs> we'll never ask you know, the questions w which are relevant to the operators. Mm -hmm. And then we will speak about the role of uh, the, 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 the um, uh, the rules and the uh, the the, uh, the actions of ICT concerning consumer protection. Okay. Sure. That's the well, Megan Meg Meg will talk about the consumer protection. This yeah. that's I'm her area. She's happy. <laughs> she'd be only too delighted because she's about to. Uh, we're about to publish some new consumer guidelines yeah. shortly. They're not yet up on the website, okay. but what we're working on in them the at the moment. In the, in the pipeline, as they say. <laughs> this, would you believe, is the interconnection agreement, and it's as big as a, it's ah, a, 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 between the two parties. A, that hasn't been published. What has been published yeah, is, is our determination, yeah. and it's quite a boring subject, but we're quite happy to, that's what we're here for, to elaborate any of the issues. I think you wanted to talk first, uh, if I recall, about the uh, amendment to the license of uh, Vodafone. Okay, let's talk about this. And the fact that some of the dates have gone backwards. Yeah. In the original license, they were to uh, launch product, uh, launch service yeah. on the 1st of March this year, and they were to have achieved a number of coverages, including 98% population coverage. Um, in the event they didn't reach this, uh, we went through this in extreme detail with them. Uh, yeah. well, as I said, I think at the previous interview with your good self, yeah. we were disappointed at the fact that they yeah. didn't reach that target. Some of the issues uh, which arose uh, really relate to the fact that they had some difficulty about getting planning permission for sites. Uh, they've had to bring in temporary equipment on wheels, which you see around Doha. Yeah. They're affectionately known as uh, cows, cells on wheels, C-O-W-S. Okay, that's why that's why they're known as uh, known as that. Um, so what we've done with our license, uh, we could we could have claimed over 100 million reals in performance bonds, but that still wouldn't have brought service to the, to the customers. So what is we put forward the coverage uh, by a few months, and we introduced one new uh, requirement. I think it's one that I think the newspapers appear to have missed, but they are required. Mm -hmm and there is a performance bond now specifically related to it, to launch uh, voice and SMS service by the 1st of July. By the 1st of July? 1st of July. I don't July. see it in the amendment. It's in the amendment. It's in the document. Okay. It's in the document. Oh. Everybody looks at the 1st of September. That is the, yeah. that's the population coverage. Yeah. They have to fit, hit 95% population coverage by the 1st of May, which is a few weeks away. Yeah. But they have to launch service by the 1st of July. Uh, for, for, for voice and SMS. Okay. They don't have to commercial, introduce... Commercial launching, commercial not launch. an experimentation. No, it's yeah. not the trial. Yeah, uh, at the right, moment, yeah. there is a trial, yeah. and um, the trial is working. Actually, one or two members of our staff had managed to get tried since. I don't have one myself. <laughs> um, they also have an offer which they have come out with for people who become shareholders in the um, yeah. in the IPO. Just to say, though, that the that the service has to be out by the first of July, and there's a performance bond of about thirty million reals on that uh, of the hundred million. Okay, thirty attached. million of the uh, of the hundred million, million, million. million is actually attached to the service launch on the first. Okay. Of and, uh, and, and on the 1st of July. And uh, I, I think I'm right because I know she, she'd correct me if, if yeah. <laughs> Megan would correct me uh, if, if what I said was incorrect. So that's something I think that uh, consumers have something to look forward to. Um, competition happening during the summertime here in Doha. Yeah, okay, good. I will continue in the same sure. issue. Um, Vodafone said that there's some problems to uh, achieve the the, the, uh, uh, the requirement of the license in the timetable fixed by ICT. 
you approve that it is really the real there is uh, problems in, uh, to 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 have the as the the the, the, um, the places or the uh, mm -hmm. to to fix the uh, bts and you amended the the, ta the timetable mm -hmm. <coughs> There is three uh, interpretation of uh, this thing. No, no, no ice. Okay. Firstly, maybe the uh, the market, Qatar market, is not ready to 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 um, introduce a second uh, operator and to uh, made a second uh, network mm -hmm. because there is some of me mechanism of. Uh, uh, rules which are not uh, uh, fixed until now. Mm -hmm. The second, uh, uh, the second option is that maybe ICT have have not rightly or uh, good uh, knowledge of the market and uh, ha ha had made a mistake making the time uh, table. Uh, timetable mm -hmm. because any any operator can't be a time okay even uh, Vodafone or uh, another one the third option is that Vodafone did not uh, work hardly to uh, to to, uh, to accommodate with this this situation and the the, the, the problem of de delay is in fact uh, is uh, of them Okay, yeah. I'll go through the three points. Actually, take the second one first. The actual date of the 1st of March is the date which they included in their bid. Yeah. So, in other words, we were holding okay. them to what the promise they made in on the technical side of their bid. It was a certain number of months yeah. after a license award. So, what we it, it didn't matter which operator got mm -hmm. the um, license, we would have held any operator. So that, that's that where, was, that's that where the date. Commitment. So therefore, therefore, the the estimation came from them, and it, the second thing is that the license obligations sit on the operator, and not not on the regulator. Yeah. So therefore, uh, having entered into this commitment, um, the obligation lay on on Vodafone to deliver this. In other words, to provide the resources. And the third point I would make is um, that there is a market here um, that we are absolutely convinced. Um, because this, I think I, I said this to you before, this is actually quite a dynamic market both in terms of population, population growth, and also in terms of market segments because it has many, many segments. Yeah. We can go through the Qatari, the non-Qatari, other Arab uh, countries. Uh, you have the European or Western expats. You have the South Asians who are here, the Filipinos. And then you have the other people from the Indian subcontinent. So there's a lot of market segments here which could be attacked by a second player. And we, we, we firmly believe that there's a great market here for a second operator, and that is still our view. Okay. However, the problems which uh, Vodafone have faced, um, and I don't want to comment on them because obviously we, we would be part of a lot of information they would have supplied, uh, uh, supplied us with. But in general, some of them are to do with uh, local rules uh, in terms of planning permission. Some of them is to do with the fact um, um, that they have entered into agreements, let's say, with, with QTEL, and these things have not moved as fast as they had expected. That's they, Vodafone, had expected. Mm -hmm. There's nothing unusual about this. It has happened before in other mm -hmm. countries. Um, they're not that far away from, from the commercial launch, and we, we believe that you will see the commercial launch in a matter of months, two to three months. When? Two to three months. Oh. I mean, because okay. basically, well, <coughs> the 1st of July um, is uh, about two and a half months away. Yeah. So I think within the next two, that's why I said two to three months. Oh, yeah. I think you will you will see the commercial launch of, of the voice and SMS service, mm -hmm. and there is a commitment, there is a performance bond we've put against that. It's not a huge delay, but it it is a delay nonetheless, and we were disappointed with it. Mm -hmm. But and we do believe, and we firmly believe, that the market um, is is ready for a competition. Okay, but uh, when Vodafone. Um, said or said that there is problems to have seats. You mean uh, sites? Sites. Sites. Yeah, sites. Locations. Yeah. Locations. Uh, ICT Qatar had 
had no role to, to play to help them? Have we have talked to the planning authorities, mm -hmm. um, but I, the, the actual allocation and availability of government lands doesn't lie with us. We, we don't have the lands available to us or the disposal mm -hmm. lands. There are other authorities within the state and we have spoken to those authorities and we understand so to a Vodafone and they're making progress with a number of government authorities. Because in Qatar, an amazingly high proportion of the land actually belongs to the government, yeah. which in many other countries would not be the case. In other countries, a lot, of, a lot more land is in private hands. But yeah. It's just a feature of Qatar and the Qatari market. And perhaps there was an underestimation on their part on the availability of, of lands, but the obligation to get those lands lies on the, uh, the operator, not on ICT Qatar. I mean, we, we felt that we had done enough. Now, we are going to talk to the urban planning people, and we have had some meetings with the urban planning people to see what the issues are, to see can we help them uh, along the way. But we don't see the responsibility for this as lying on us. The, the license obligations, I keep repeating, lie on the operator. And um, Vodafone, uh take an alternative uh, to, uh, to uh, resolve this problem and they, they are uh, making uh, temporary, uh, uh, temporary uh, stations. There is some talks about the quality and the, um, uh, the technicity of, the, of those uh, temporary stations. Uh, have you, uh, is ICT uh, uh, knowing uh, what uh, Vodafone is uh, introducing? Uh, well, there were some the issues days. raised about noise because they have to have generators. They uh, have to submit uh, for each material they introduce? No, they don't. They don't, they don't have to. They don't have to tell. They, they have. Their license generally permits them to put towers, whatever. Yeah. But obviously, okay. The, the, the second point was about the noise. We did write to them about this, and we also spoke to the manufacturer, and they are putting sound and any material on that. The one point I'd make about mobile telephony, and its point, I hope you understand it, mobile telephony didn't become dangerous because yeah, Vodafone came to Qatar. Not, it's either, it, for, for, first of all, no, 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 for, first of all, said, first of all, it's a safe technology. Yeah. ICT Qatar would not have licensed an unsafe technology. What, what we probably need um, to have here, um, and in fact there are standards, and these are the standards which we'll be asking them, is some form of public reassurance, not only for Vodafone but for QTEL, because it's never been here for QTEL before we, before we came along, to show um, that the towers here are all within international safety standards, and we know they are because they're made, the towers, the equipment are made by reputable manufacturers. There, is a, there are international standards recognized by the World Health Organization, the International Commission for Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection, commonly known as ICNIRP for short, because it's such a mouthful, and all of the towers here within that are within those standards. What we will do is we will carry out um, tests at regular in, enough intervals, maybe once a year, maybe twice a year, and we will publish this data. And this has been done already by QTEL with the university. They, they have done yeah. this a couple of times with Qatar University and there's no reason at all. You're talking about exactly the same equipment and that's being used by Vodafone, exactly the same type, exactly the same output. Uh, because uh, I am asking this question because there are some bands saying that those equipment are an old, uh, old equipment, old technology. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> It's the same. It's the same equipment and the same and the same technology. In fact, uh, QTEL have a, have a, a lot of very similar equipment. Right? There there is no difference. Okay. Let's uh, move to the uh, um, interconnection agreement. You really want to be poor. <laughs> Between the two <laughs> operators, we know that the process uh, for ICT to make a decision on the uh, fees. Mm -hmm. On the interconnection, fees take three months, mm -hmm. over the three months, and you have made uh, a benchmark uh, studies uh, uh, concerning the, the population. The uh, mm -hmm. but but there is an element who was missing as a structure of chaos in mm -hmm. calculating chaos and. Uh, 
uh, include, uh, you said it in the uh, statement you, uh, you have uh, mm. published in the website. Uh, why uh, Qtil is so late to make uh, made li like this uh, system? No, first of all, I think the thing has happened very quickly. I think there's been very few markets anywhere in the world that you would have seen an interconnection agreement, and that's the size of the agreement. Uh, within six months of them actually commencing negotiation, this was signed on the 15th of March. Oh, several hundred. As big as, say, as big as a telephone directory. If I can go into the whole thing about interconnection, about wholesale rates, um, that what the public sees uh, by way of charges in their bills are retail rates, and they, they're the rates um, that they pay to their operators. But operators, um, and it's relatively simple here in Qatar because you, initially you won't have two operators, but in lots of other countries you can have ten fixed operators, you know, four or five mobile operators, all yeah. sending calls to each other, a whole crisscross of yeah. activity going on. And what they try to do is they try to recover from each other the cost of, of basically of their networks. There is a cost of maintaining a network. So if, if you're an operator and I'm an operator mm -hmm. and one of my customers calls you, uh, one of your customers, basically for, you, for, for your customer to receive that call, it must terminate on your network. In other yeah. words, it, it goes into your network. That's why we use the word terminate, or it means yeah. to end on your network. And the normal way that they that the operators compensate themselves for maintaining the cost of their network and receiving the calls is through these termination charges. They would, in the first instance, try and negotiate these. Right. In other words, they would have sat down maybe after the summer last last year and they would have tried to negotiate rates. Now, we actually took out of the document an offer that was made by Qtel and the response was made by Vodafone. Our reason, our reason, our reason. I have delayed the proposals. We didn't delay it at all. It was never delayed by us. No, deleted. Well, oh, deleted, deleted. Oh, we deleted. Yeah. Sorry, not yeah. delayed. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. I, I miss yeah. it. The reason why we deleted it, sorry, if I can explain, is that in negotiations, if people know that their numbers are going to be revealed publicly later on, it might restrict them in negotiating. Yeah. But however, what we decided, our numbers are in there, and our numbers are different yeah. to the other numbers. I give you, you can, you can guess yourself as to what the original numbers yeah, look like. They might, they might have been somewhat apart, but however, I'd say no more than that. So what happened was, they came along to us with a number of issues that they couldn't uh, resolve. Um, some, some issues we dealt with through interim or time to come in to negotiate. These ones, they were so far apart, it was obvious that we're never going to reach a uh, conclusion. Yeah. You'll see also that they included as well as the mobile, the fixed and the yeah. SMS. There were some other ones about video and those, but they were not particularly important for the initiation of the market. The really important ones are voice calls and SMS. Yeah. So what we did, what we would do any regulator would try to do is try and work out what the costs of these things are, what's the genuine cost. But whoever doing a costing exercise can take maybe a couple of years to do. And in fact, we've started a regulatory accounting system with QTEL to determine their costs. Yeah. And we have written to them, we've issued them with instructions, they have to produce separated accounts, we have to look at their historic costs, the cost for the efficient supplier uh, and all that. But I won't go into that because we are not at a point in time. And normally, that would normally take a minimum of about 24 months to accomplish. So the usual technique then, in the absence of this, is to use a technique known as benchmarking. Mm -hmm. And benchmarking means going to trying to go to similar countries outside of this uh, country, mm -hmm. maybe within the region, because the, one of the things about the region is that you would assume, for example, that let's say UAE or Saudi, the costs would be very similar, whereas the United States are Canada or Australia costs might be quite different because, for example, labor costs could be quite different in those countries. So for the MTR, we used um, the GCC countries. Uh, you'll see the countries listed there. And we basically took an average. We applied some uh, calculation to it. For the fixed, there wasn't that much information available within GCC. So we looked to the next most similar region. We looked at MENA. The region, you, yeah, region, yeah. region, yeah, region, saw, the, your, your own, your own difference, region. Yeah. For the SMS, um, what we did is we came up with a ratio between the mobile termination rate 
and the um, uh, and the SMS rate. So we looked a little bit further afield and we brought in some yeah. European countries. Yeah. So we issued these as uh, findings uh, to the operators. Um, just bear in mind one thing here. This was a dispute where, which had been referred to us by Vodafone about the rates that QTEL mm -hmm. were proposing to charge them. But um, it, it, in, in the agreement here, yeah. um, th this operates, which hasn't yet been published, we're hoping to get the operators to publish this. Okay. Now, there's, if you really want to bore yourself to death, this is not the book, bedtime book that, you're, that you always wanted. But it, it, in this, uh, the rates are reciprocal. But, but Vodafone had freedom to set their rates because, so in fact, they, they charge each other the same. So yeah. it's 16 dirhams going one way and 16 dirhams going the other way. Yeah. Now, these are not prices that the consumer sees. These are just interconnection billing. Okay. So there's revenue, there's, there's revenue made, uh, for example, by Vodafone and a QTEL person calling uh, a, a Vodafone person. Okay, but okay. how it will impact or affect the uh, price policies of the two operators? I know that uh, um, regarding the, uh, the uh, seeing the, the benchmarking, we, 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 we see that you have fixed the lowest uh, interconnection fees in the GCC. What's your wow. aim? I think that uh, no, Kuwait is... is uh, no, it's not the lowest. No, it's not the lowest. Let me look at the table of numbers. <laughs> yeah. Bahrain, 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 Bahrain is quite low. Yeah. Bahrain. No, 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 no. Bahrain 90. is 7. Is it? Mm -hmm. 90? Yeah. Uh, Saudi, um, Oman, Saudi, Oman, and and UAE are higher than here, but Kuwait and Bahrain are much lower. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we are. Yeah, we're, we're lower than most of the GCC <laughs> countries. Even I mean, it's not the, the lower. How it will impact or affect the uh, uh, the retail. The retail. Yeah. We don't think it'll have an adverse effect on the, re it will, it will, the retail. It, it's not, but in fact, it we, we actually think in the costs of the it, 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 is, the, it is included in the costs. But it, but it actually, by being lower than those other three countries, it gives them more scope to reduce the price. Because basically, it gives them more margin, and yeah. uh, therefore the operators have more margin to operate for competition. We think it's a fair finding. It's a good finding. And uh, I am not in a position to obviously discuss with you what QTEL would have been prepared to accept under their own proposals. We have actually left it, left it out of this. Okay. But um, we, we, we believe, and both, both sides came back and um, have accepted it in, in both directions. So it's a, it is one of the costs which underlies the cost of a call. You know? And this for, for um, um, this decision and this fits will be for all time or will be renegotiated if they, between the if, the... if they come back and negotiate a lower rate, um, the rate they, changes, they, they, would, they, they would have to come back to us. What, what we will do is, though, is we will review these rates again when we finish the costing exercise. Okay. Because one of the things is, what you want to do is want to work back from the cost of the network down to the cost of an individual call. Yeah. Now, that is a really complex equation, and we have a top-level uh, regulatory economist here who's going to work on this so far as, yeah. and it's not something I think that your readers want to know, but uh, can I tell you that within the next two years, uh, we'll be looking at the costs again in the light of the actual costs. These are, these are, these are just coming out with figures based on a, a benchmark comparison. Okay. Just one question, question concerning uh, Vodafone. Voda, Vodafone is uh, selling uh, special numbers, star numbers, mm -hmm. on the on its uh, website by fixed uh, price. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the fixed prices uh, uh, taking how many sevens is in the number? Mm -hmm. uh, is that correct? Is is and is that legal? Because they are. Um, selling numbers, and we know that the the, the, the operators or operators they are selling services. Is that okay. correct? Okay. This one about the numbers. First of all, it was one of my 
first things I came across when I came here three years ago uh, is part of the culture here. The people yeah. want to have numbers, desire to have numbers, and are willing to pay large amounts of money for them. First of all, just as a basic principle, any customer is entitled to get a number. It might not be an easy to remember number for free. In other words, they have to have. To, if somebody walks in and says, "I want a telephone and I want a number for the telephone," you're entitled to a number. One of the things, though, that we're concerned with here is the balance between having these ETR numbers and people having numbers available, because there is there is an issue here in Qatar, particularly about the national number stock. The population here grew much faster than anyone could have foreseen, yeah. and one of the things we may have to do in the next few years is actually extend the number uh, range. At the moment, you have seven digits. Yeah. Uh, we may have to go to eight or to nine. And we, yeah, we, yeah, we're just we are setting up a working group with the operators yeah. as to how we're going to handle this. Uh, we're bringing in a firm of consultants. We're going to assist us with this process uh, because if the population and the population may have flattened out a bit this year, but the last two years have been staggering. I mean, at the beginning of last year, we'd have said there was eight, nine hundred thousand people. I think there's something like one point five, one point six million. Yeah, well, is the official. Yeah, yeah, it's in that range. So therefore, that had happened very, very quickly. So therefore, we're, addre we're addressing this issue about numbers. With the easy to remember numbers and the fashion that's here for this, what, what we want to do is we don't want to stop it altogether. But what we want to do is we want to, as it were, control the numbers that are put out. Now, we are in discussion both with both Qtel and with Vodafone. There's a couple of things people need to remember, though, is that if we extend the number range, and you buy a certain number of sixes and sevens, you, it, you may get something at the beginning of it. So just, just, just to take that as an example. The second thing, the condition we put in, is that if somebody pays money for a number, and for some reason that number changes, or that number has to be taken back because the state requirements or the regulatory requirements, yeah. then the operator has because, to has to the has to are, compensate are the, them. The own, are the owner basically the government? It belongs to the yeah. government, the government state. The state. The state. There's no property. Yeah, the state. No, yeah. There's no property rights in the numbers, so therefore um, they may have to compensate them back. But however, we 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 realise that there is a culture here of this. Uh, Qtel regularly holds auctions, and I think holds the world record. I mean, yeah. for the, yeah. for the yeah. something like Heaven ten million reels. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's actually the, the highest in the Guinness Book of <coughs> Records. So what what we would see is uh, we need to going forward um, have a policy with them. Sit down. We've had certain discussions with them earlier this year. We reached a certain level of agreement with them that we would have a working party, and we would hope to have this work finished by the end of um, 2010. Yeah. So it'd be starting this year. We, we 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 don't think the country would run out of numbers before then. So, but at some stage there will have to be an extension of the number range um, yeah. going forward. Because if the population of Qatar is going to go into two million, three million. You know, into those kind of ranges that some people are talking about, you definitely will need more numbers. Okay. Just uh, let me come back to the uh, agreement between the two operators. Mm. After the agreement, there uh, was some declaration, some statements, and uh, uh, interviews in the press. It's about from side, the side sharing, is it? <laughs> is this is this thing about the side sharing, is it? Is it? Location yeah. Location, yeah, location sharing. sharing. Yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry, I used the wrong word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just uh, a comment. When we see uh, differences uh, and uh, um, the two operators speaking both of the other uh, on the, 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 the newspapers, do you do you think that is a healthy case and that is a proof of uh, of a healthy uh, competition of uh, a lot. Well, where I, where I come from, that's normal. Uh, yeah. It's actually normal for operators um, to have some disagreements and some disputes. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, the, the, it doesn't really disturb me. Yeah, yeah. It's somewhat maybe maybe somewhat unusual in this in this environment. For example, you don't have other areas for this competition, like banks, you don't have banks, banks, banks fighting, yeah. It's good. <laughs> yeah, okay, so so in that sense it's healthy. The second yeah. thing is, there is a side sharing agreement. Yeah. That's actually a copy of it there. It's actually a very substantial document. In the side sharing agreement, they've agreed to share sites. In the event of any dispute about any particular site, 
where they where they had said they would share there was a site sharing agreement they can refer it to us for arbitration okay. for dispute that's what that's what we're here as, as regulator for mm -hmm. so far on sites there's been no reference to us on dispute mm -hmm. settlement on, on sharing that there is an issue before us about indoor sites which is the booster radio that you have inside in buildings which we are which we're dealing with at the moment but there is, there's been nothing about outdoor sites referred to us it could be referred to us but however, the best way of them dealing with this is commercial. Is for them to have a commercial agreement, to work the commercial agreement, and to get on sites. It's one of the most common things around the world. Because it actually works out to boat operators' advantage. In other words, that I have a tower here, I can put my dishes on your, uh, my tower, you can put your dishes on the other tower. There is, there is a price agreed between us. And we do that. There's various technical standards about no interference, about the workmen getting access to the sites. That's why the, that's one of the reasons why the document is so big, because there has to be a whole set of rules about, about these things. But what they what they've negotiated here is a commercial agreement between the Swiss. They had, were required under the law to file with us, and they have filed it with us. So in the event of any dispute, then under this filed agreement, <coughs> they may they may come to us. And uh, we can arbitrate. So far, we haven't had any such reference. Nobody has referred. None of these disputes have been referred to us so far. Okay. Um, do you think that there is signs for uh, uh, a healthy competition, and uh, which will have an impact for the service uh, given to the uh, consumer, the uh, prices uh, policy between the two operators? Well, the prices. Well, <coughs> QTEL, we already know their prices and yeah. their, 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 their prices are out and they're published. There's a slightly different notification process for the two operators. You might as well know this. First of all, QTEL is a dominant player. You can line this up with monopoly or significant market power mm -hmm. and was declared to be dominant last year. It was one of the first things we did uh, in the middle of last year. The effect of this is that as a dominant player, uh, QTEL has to notify us 28 days in advance of any prices. For me, then, 28 days, four weeks yeah. in advance of, of a new price coming in. So they have, and they notify us. And they have to get our permission to launch any particular price. We can um, ask for changes. We, we don't generally regulate on the basis that, yeah. we, that we are determining price. the price. But what we look for is consistency, consumer welfare, transparency, all of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They also have to inform uh, customers uh, 21 days in advance of any price increase. QTAR are obliged to do increase. this. Increase. Increase. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any increase. Okay. Then to go on to Vodafone. Uh, Vodafone have a slightly different standard. They have to notify us on the day they launch, on or before the date they launch the service. And Vodafone also, uh, within a 21-day period afterwards, we can go back to them and say, we don't like this, you need to change this. So oh, okay. it's a slightly different, it's a slightly lighter, it's a lighter regime for Vodafone. At this point in time, um, we obviously know what QTEL's offerings are. At this point in time, we don't know what Vodafone's it's final awesome. commercial launch is because they have a couple of months to get this ready and to launch it. We do know, we did know about the trial offer and we do know about the shareholder offer. So we're actually aware of both of, both of these. How was the um, opinion of ICT concerning the trial offer? We, I would prefer not to make comments <laughs> on how good one offer is against the other. Yeah. Because basically what we want as a regulator, we want the market to decide. In other words, we want the market to decide um, which is the better offer. And we won't be making any recommendations or any distinction between the two. However, one of the things we will be very uh, clear on, keen on, is that there will be transparency in these offers and we will be requiring them to publish their offers on their website and that kind of thing. In some of the more complicated markets, there is, uh, regulators have put up uh, websites, I know we've done this in, in my own country, say that if I want a package which, which provides for this amount of SMS and this amount of minutes per month, you know, which are the best deals, but what, the, what it does is it, it shows you all the deals that are available and then the <coughs> consumer goes in on the website and chooses the best deal. 
we, we would never be saying that Vodafone's is better than Qtel or Qtel yeah. is better than, we feel that this is, what we will provide for is for the transparency, the way it's advertised, the terms and conditions that are in there, in there for our consumers, and Megan's been doing a lot of work on this. And effectively, this, this is how the customers uh, will determine, because this is a regulator's ideal, which is that the market decides which is the best. How we come back to the Vodafone uh, trial offer? They are um, they have a mechanism or a model to 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 have to be one of the first users of the uh, Vodafone numbers. You must have a credit card, an international credit card for paying by internet. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that correct? Also, because there is a lot of people. We don't have I know. This, uh, this is uh, abstracting the right to. Well, first of all, it was for a for trial. Example, for the second uh, offer concerning the uh, yeah. uh, the um, mm. the shareholders, mm -hmm. the first shareholders, there is twenty thousand of shareholders until now. Mm -hmm. This number is given by you, Mr. You have the number, have you? Yeah, Graham gave this number, and now there is 20,000 shareholders. Mm. I think uh, perhaps 20% have a credit card. I think what you're talking about is something that they did um, for administrative um, ease, as it were. That, that's, that's as we understand it. However, we will not. Is an obstacle for no, 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 no. Can I, can I just, can I, can I just? Get, I get, I get, I get to the end very quickly on this. Okay. We, we, we would not accept a scenario, however, going forward in which the service to the general public would be on the basis yeah. of a credit card or bank account only. In, wow. in other words, that people have to be able to pay in cash. As you know, a lot, a very high percentage of this market, I think somewhere around 70 to 80 percent, is yeah. prepaid. Yeah. Yes. And the people who pay prepaid, they actually win and they, they buy the a card or they buy the credit at the corner shop in by paying reels across, across the counter. Uh, we would not accept a scenario um, that someone was going to launch a service for credit card owners only. Our understanding is the reason why they did this for the trial was for pure administrative convenience. In other words, it was easier for them to do and set this up because, for example, they didn't have their own distribution mechanism, they didn't have their own shops open. There was a whole series of reasons which they gave us. So I can understand why. And they chose to go that way. But when the when the actual full service is launched, it should be available as a general service available to the general public, paying by whatever means. And I don't think you, I have no reason to believe that you that you see anything different. Uh, um, you have launched uh, a consultation uh, on uh, Qtel tariffs for corporate telecommunication mm, mm. services and product in 2008. Mm. What was the result of this consultation and uh, what, uh, what what are the action the actions taken by ICT concerning this result? Mm -hmm. um, you have a lot of memory. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, basically, uh, we, we received responses from uh, a number of the corporate people. We didn't publish the, the results of this, but we have done work on the corporate tariffs with um, with um, with uh, Qtel. Um, these are the, what what we. I think the next stage following this would be to get them to put up on their website the actual corporate tariffs themselves. They at the moment. There isn't really particular transparency on those. They have a lot of the details of the consumer tariffs, uh, which are up on, on the website. One of the issues with corporate tariffs is this, is that corporate tariffs are slightly different to consumer tariffs in that corporates generally have some buying power themselves, particularly the bigger corporates. So there isn't the same need, as it were, for um, us to um, be uh, providing um, these um, the same kind of protection to the corporate people here. However, there, one of the things that came out of the things we found is that there wasn't really a full understanding among the corporate purchasers here of what the new scenario meant for them, because they have a the power of what we call arbitrage. The real benefit of this will, won't be seen though until uh, Vodafone launched their fixed service. I mean, the process of finalizing their fixed license. Yeah, um, and that, that was also one of, one of your questions. Yeah. Uh, so on the corporate on the corporate tariff thing, um, 
it has made some difference, but it, the impact wouldn't be seen by the public, it would only be seen by the corporates. The real benefit on this will come when the corporates who have buying power themselves have a choice for these products. One of the corporate tariffs we did publish, however, at the time was VSAT. And we've, we've gone out to, because we feel there's a shortage of VSAT uh, services here, particularly in Cork for the oil and gas. And what we're doing with that is uh, we went out for consultation on this. We received a very healthy about 10 responses, mm -hmm. including quite a substantial number of companies interested in coming into this market. And you'll shortly see a licensing process being launched for VSAT services. We're finalising the licence okay. at the moment. So that's, that was one of the corporate tariffs which actually went out. So we're doing different things with it. The fact we didn't publish a final report doesn't mean we haven't acted on it. Uh, until now, QZ has been fees for exclusivity mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. uh, when did it will stop to pay it okay because there is uh, I think from there's some very interesting questions <laughs> <laughs> you didn't pick these up or down in the soap whack of these <laughs> questions <laughs> okay this is there's a there's a simple formula set out it's actually set out in the in the decree law which the Emir yeah. signed in 2006 is that on the until the date of a competitive service launch, they would continue to pay the previous exclusivity fee of 25%. Mm -hmm. they, that competitive service launch is probably going to be the 1st of July or before. You are not taking uh, the trial? The, no. the, the trial? The trial ah. is not. No, there's a definition in the licenses. And, uh, this lady drafted it. <laughs> she, she will tell you. It, it has to be available, a competitive service launch has to be available to all of the public, to the general public. That's the way it's actually stated. So the trial was a restricted offer, and so too is the thing for the shareholders. That's restricted to a restricted user group. It, it will be the, when the service launched. Now, from that day onwards, there's two fees that have to be yeah. paid. There's one fee of 1%, which, which is for us, basically. It's, it's a license fee. And there's a 12.5% fee known as an industry fee. 12.5%. 12.5%. The, fir the first payment of that fee will have to be paid by the 1st of March 2010 because basically it, it will cover the year 2009. Okay, it's done on a calendar year, but it's to be paid by the 1st of March the following year because they have to do their accounts. The 1% fee is based upon their um, net revenues, which is their, their revenues from their licenses here in Qatar. In Qatar? Yeah, only in Qatar. Not for all the group. Not for all the group, no. Less interconnection, our old friend interconnection fees, because yeah. they're out payments, and they, they're the payments they make mm -hmm. out, out to Vodafone here. Or indeed to operators, if somebody's making an international call, let's say to India, then they have to make a payment to Reliance or to whatever the, the operator is in India. Mm -hmm. And then the 12.5% is on net profits, which is that figure, less allowable expenses. In net profit? Net profit, okay. yeah. Um, net profit for their operation in Qatar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For their operation in Qatar. So therefore, if they own something in Paltel in Palestine or something like this or yeah. what in the year, yeah. then the revenues from that. So we, it will require separation of their international and their national business. Not impossible, but there's some work involved, in and it's for them to do <laughs> <Okay>. it. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the fixed line lessons, second fixed mm -hmm. line lessons. Why there is a delay? Uh... Well, none of the delays have been here. There are two parties involved now in this. There is Qtel, sorry, sorry Qtel Vodafone yeah. and Kateri DR will be a yeah. partner in this. Ah. Now, we have today actually okay. received some documents from them, which I think, based on what we, we see, Megan, you can safely say we should allow us in the next few months to finalise that licence. Yes, I can't see any more. It, the, the delay has been on the other side, we're between the parties concerned. But there should be nothing now that we've received these Vodafone documents. Vodafone Qatar or Vodafone Group? Uh, it's, it's Vodafone and Qatar Foundation. Yeah. Will be a partner with Qatari DR. Okay. Okay. And Vodafone and Qatar Foundation will own about 50, Qatar DR around 35, and then the remaining 15 will go to government institutions. And just 50, 35 is 85, 15 is 100. 30, Sorry, I'm just doing my maths very quickly here. 35? 30, yeah. Yeah, um, just. For uh, DR. For DR. Remember me? Certificate.